So here I have my DJI Spark drone. Basically, I bought it like five or six years ago because I went down a massive YouTube rabbit hole of watching these amazing drone videos, cinematic footage, and I wanted to do that because I bought it and then I barely ever used it. I crashed it once, destroyed it, got it replaced, blah, 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 put it in a cupboard, forgot about it for years, and now I actually need it. I've moved into a new house and there's actually some wasps making a home somewhere but I don't know where I can see them sort of flying around my roof so I want to send the drone up and find where they are but I can't do it because basically the batteries are dead so I haven't charged these batteries up for like five or six years this is what they look like when I try and turn them on literally there's nothing a good battery actually looks like this so when you press the button it tells you basically how much it's charged four lights fully charged but the batteries I had were all dead. I have three of them. I got the fly more combo and yeah, they don't work. So that's apparently a safety feature that DJI have put in. Sounds to me like a money making feature though, because these batteries are absolutely fine. If you can just unlock the software to make them work again and make them charge. So that's what we're going to do. And if you look online on YouTube, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of videos doing this. And what you'll actually see is that people are using this little board. It's a CP2112 board. It's basically a, a interface between USB and I2C. So using this and a piece of software you can download, if you can find it, allows you to communicate with the battery and um, basically unlock it, clear the flags that tell it shouldn't be allowed to charge, seal it back up again, and then it will charge perfectly. So there's loads of videos showing you this, but actually I couldn't get it to work. So I bought one of these from Amazon, plugged it in, followed the instructions, literally nothing on my computer. So I thought it must be a dud. I bought a second one, different seller, tried again, absolutely nothing. I tried a different computer and I have to say, I think it's probably because of um, maybe Windows 11, because without even connecting it to the battery, if I just plug it into the computer, it's not recognized as a device. It doesn't appear as a serial port or anything like that. So it basically doesn't work. And that got me thinking, well, Arduinos, so this is a simple Arduino Nano, have an I2C bus. You know, they can communicate with I2C devices and these batteries are I2C devices. Okay, so they've, they've got a, a ground positive and they've got a serial clock and a serial data line. So in theory, we should be able to get the Arduino Nano to communicate with the battery and be able to clear all the flex. So I did a little bit of research and I found a website called The Circuit School, which basically has done all this, all the hard work already. So I must credit that website. It's perfect. It tells you exactly what to do. And I'm going to show you that process now. All you need is this, the battery, a few jumper wires and some free software. So let's get started on that. So I have my Arduino Nano, it's just a counterfeit one, not an actual real Arduino. It's really cheap, just costs like less than a pound, I think, from Amazon. Um, one thing to be aware of is that it actually takes that really old style USB mini, I think it's called, um, which is a bit of a pain because I didn't have one of those. So a few days after realizing that, I ordered one from Amazon and it arrived. So it's just a standard USB A to mini or whatever that's called so you need that of course i've got my dead battery oh no that's the working battery this is the dead battery so this was dead as well i should say but i just fixed it using this approach as a practice run so i've got my dead battery i need some jumper wires and if the battery is completely dead you actually need to give it some voltage to be able to the sort of chip inside it to work so I'll use a DC power supply for that. You can just use a nine volt battery or, or whatever you need. Something around nine to 12 volts will work fine. So let's look at getting this wired up. So if you look at the circuit school's website, it basically says you should be using pin A4 and A5 on the Nano. So we can see where those are. A label, thankfully on the silk screen, A4 and A5 are these two pins here. So 
So really, in theory, if your battery's not completely dead like mine is, that's all you'll need. You don't need anything else. Um, if it's completely dead, you'll probably need a voltage supply. So on the spark battery, we need the spark battery layout. So pin five, this pin here. So starting from the left, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Pin five is the ground wire. So I shove that in. So pin A4 on the nano is the data line SDA. So pin four is blue and SDA is right next to pin five. It's pin six. Plug that in. Okay. And the last one I need to plug in is the clock, which is pin one on this battery. Plug that in. So let's go and do the software now. So first things first, I've actually unplugged my Arduino from the battery um, because I just want to make sure that my computer can actually communicate with the Arduino. So I've opened up Arduino IDE and you can see there's actually nothing connected to the computer at the moment, no COM ports available. So I'm going to plug the Arduino in, okay, and when I click down now, I should see a COM port, unknown COM port 4. Okay, and this is a nano board, so I'm going to select nano, Arduino nano, even though it's not a real one, and click OK. If you want to, you can upload a simple sketch, like a blink sketch or something like that, just to check that it's actually working, but I know mine is the lights on, the COM port's available, it says Arduino connected to COM port 4. What I'm going to do now is I need to upload the this software that's going to communicate with the battery, so you do that through Xloader. You need to know what COM port your Nano's on, so COM port 4 is correct. You need to go find that file you downloaded, Mavic PF Reset Circuit Schools.hex. So as I said, this comes from circuitschools.com. Open that hex file. And really importantly, you must change the baud rate of the of the communication. Basically, this is not the right one. And if you just click upload now, your computer will freeze. You probably have to reset. So the correct board rate is 115200. I'll click OK. And now when you click upload, you can see it says 4846 bytes unloaded. So I've disconnected this from battery um, because I don't want to cause any problems whilst I was doing any of this. But now let's see what happens when we open the serial monitor. It's not connected to the battery at the moment. Now I'm going to connect it to the battery and turn the power on. Okay. So if you just look at the text now, you can see. So the Arduino has communicated with the battery. It's done something called unsealing it, which I don't really know what that means, unlocking it somehow, I guess. It's cleared those flags that indicate, you know, the cells have run too low and the battery is not suitable to be charged anymore. It's cleared all that. It's resealed it. So now when you plug your battery into the charger, it thinks it's just a, you know, a low battery that it's free to charge. So let's give that a try. So I have my charger. You can see it's plugged in. It's the, the free battery charger. So I've got the battery I've just fixed. You can see it's flashing this one dot now. I don't really know what that indicates, but let's stick it on here. That's charging up. So now you can see I've plugged it in. That's charging up give that half an hour and it's ready for flight. Awesome. So again, have to give credit where credit's due. Circuitschools.com played a blinder with that software. It's really worked. All these batteries I have now are back. These are two batteries that I had yesterday fixed. Absolutely amazing. And go fly my drone now. Here I am flying my drone. I'm incredibly lucky because I didn't actually see that wire from the telegraph pole. Nearly clicked it because I was actually stood inside when doing this. But there you can see the corner of my house. Um, you can see the tiles and the air brick. And I'm absolutely not sure what that white wire is, but I need to investigate. And you can also actually see um, a few missing tiles there. So I need to kind of crack on and, and look into that as well. So there you go. You can see my next door neighbor's roof is a hell of a lot better than mine.
But anyway, the drone works, the batteries are recovered, all's good. The, dr the drone flew for about 20 minutes, which is what it's meant to do, and worked perfectly. Thanks for watching.